This is a quick tutorial for Vectorworks Landmark 2012 on how to create plant symbols for construction drawings. My name is Ruth and I'll be guiding you through the tutorial today. This tutorial focuses on planting symbols to be used in construction drawings as opposed to illustrative symbols that are used in our concept plans. This office produces black and white plans for construction plans. One of the reasons for this is that for the contractors it is a lot easier and cheaper to get black and white printed plans than it is to get full colour plans printed. The second reason is that with black and white plans it's easier to show the upper and the lower story since you can see the lower story below the upper story. And thirdly, it's just a general convention that's used in Australia. There are a number of things that all plant symbols in construction plans must have. One of those is a circle to indicate the canopy of the tree or plant. This office draws plants at 75% of their mature estimated canopy spread. We also ensure that the line weight is representative of whereabouts that plant appears in the overall scheme. So for example, trees are drawn with heavier line weight than a shrub or a ground cover. In addition to that, the centre of the plant, or where the trunk is, is indicated by a cross. We vary this cross depending on the size of plant. For example, a tree would have a larger cross than a shrub or a ground cover. Each plant symbol or group of plants has a call out line to the tag. The call out line is generally for this office at 90 degrees or 180 degrees. If we are using call out lines at 45 degrees, we would ensure that all call out lines are at 45 degrees. And we have the tag which goes to the quantity and code. So this office uses a very standard system when it comes to coding. For example, Eucalyptus forestiana would be capital E, lowercase f. Lamandra longifolia niella would be capital L, lowercase l and capital N. The N obviously refers to the first initial of the cultivar name. Creating plant symbols in Vectorworks 2012 is actually quite simple. The first thing you need to do is select the circle tool or you'll, when you become a little bit more advanced you can actually draw shapes using freehand, the freehand tool, the polygon tool or any of the other tools. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that for the plant symbol spacings to work, you need to ensure that you're drawing in the centre of the page. So we select a circle, or we draw, we draw a circle to any size. I generally don't have this circle filled at this stage because we're interested in drawing planting plant symbols. Now I think this is a bit of a glitch with the 2012 program, but if you click, if you right click on the circle, you don't get a create new plant option, but if we right click just off the circle, we get create new plant, which is what you need to select. So you can see that it brings up this window where you enter the information for your new plant. And it's very simply a case of adding in the information. Now the plant symbol name doesn't appear in the schedule or anything like that. That's just an internal name that we give the plants so that we can find them easily in our resource browser. So for example, we start with an abbreviation of the plant form. In this case, I want to add a tree. So we start with a T, a space, a dash, another space, and then the, the name of the tree. And we use the botanical name then it's often a case of finding the correct information on the web. Now you always have to be very careful about the websites you go to to get information. You're looking for a website which is actually going to be correct and going to be correct in terms of Australian conditions and specifically Melbourne conditions. Obviously Australia is a very large uh, continent with 
very many different climatic zones. So if you're choosing, for example, a website from a nursery that's based in Queensland, the estimated sizes for a plant growing in Queensland are going to be much larger than a plant growing in Melbourne, where the annual rainfall can only be 400 millimetres as opposed to close to 1200. So we begin to fill in the information. Using common names can lead to a lot of confusion, so we generally only use common names which are very widely used. There is not a well-known common name for Parotia persica in Australia, so I'm going to leave that blank. Then I go to fill in the plant or the tag ID. Generally we use the first letter of the genus and species and the schedule size. So this would be the most commonly used schedule size for this plant. In this case we would probably put a 50 centimetre pot in there and then we would also add this pot size to the internal office name of the plant so that we can easily find it. Then I'd go on to Google and I'd try to find uh, the size. So according to Fleming's, where Page and Fleming's is a nursery located not too far from here, we could expect this plant to grow to an average height of 7 metres and a width of 5 metres um, at a age of 20 years. So that's the information that we're going to put in here to develop the rest of the plant symbol. So when I get to this stage, to fill in this area, I generally go into the plant data tag and fill out the rest of the information there. If there's no common name, I just delete the common name. We have to always categorise our plants, otherwise they do not show up on our schedule. As you become more and more familiar with plants, you'll actually find that there's a range of heights and widths that they grow to in Melbourne and you'll begin to put in a range. But as I'm not familiar with this plant, we'll keep it at the published uh, height and spread. Now in terms of the dimensions that we put in here, these dimensions control the actual graphic symbol. As a general rule, our office uses 75% of the estimated mature size and width. So for the spread, that's three, just over three and a half metres. And for the height, that's a little bit over five metres. Then we go and we select our other information. So we generally do turn on rendering at creation. We, for a tree, we might use uh, two lines, two outlines. If it's a very large tree, perhaps we'd use three. We do keep mass overlapping plants ticked. We don't generally show plant shadows. We've already completed all the required information at this stage. And then we get into the default place placing. We like to have the canopy overlapping graphically by about 10% and we also round down or up accordingly so that we get a nice even spacing. So for this tree I would put around 3.25 uh, metres but of course everything's in millimetres. We generally set up all of our plants so that no polygon is displayed we choose a cross because we remember a dot indicates an existing tree and we're doing proposed trees. And then the smallest tick size that we'd use for a tree is number three. We'd also tick random rotation here. Also, we want this to appear on the plant list. We generally pick right as a standard um, set out for our tag display. Then we need to pick a class for the tag. We always make sure that we allocate a class for the tag. We've set our own internal office classes up, but Vectorworks comes with a range of standard classes which apply to plant symbols. So you go to plants, components, and then you get the classes. So in this case, we'll pick up the tags class here. 
the approach angle is generally um, 90 or 180 degrees. Then we don't have a tag bubble. Tag top is usually quantity and ID code. We leave those of those blanks and we enable the tag shoulder line. Then, assuming you've done everything correctly, it's a case of just clicking OK and the symbol will appear. So you can see here that we have a bit of an issue in that one tag, the tag here isn't showing up. It's got a class here. Let's see if that class is actually turned on. Okay, so it turned out that that issue was just related to the text size. It was actually showing up, but it was tiny. So now we have that plant in place. So then you go to the Place Plant toolset, and it brings up these additional tools here. The choice of what tool to use is dependent on what you want to do. So for a single plant, plant or like a feature tree, you would use this one which just leaves one tree with its own tag. Let's delete those and have a play around with the rest of them. This one here we don't really use very often because contractors find it confusing, but this is the plant placing tool. So you can see that you can place three individual uh, plants there, but it only calls out one plant tag. So if you have gaps like this between the trees, it can be very confusing for the contractor as they might look in this section and not actually see a tag. One thing that we can do if you really want to use this, this tool is to display the polygons. So we generally have the centres dashed and that actually links the trees together. We don't really use that tool though unless the trees are quite close together. You can also use them so that they're touching like that for example. And you can see that because we picked the mass overlapping plants, it's got rid of all the line work between all three plants. Then this is a straight line, very simple. If you wanted to alter the preset spacing, and you can remember that we used uh, 3.25 when we set up this plant, you can do so by altering it here. When you use this, it only alters the plant group that you have selected. It will not alter future um, plants or other groups of plants in the drawing. By far the two most common uh, plant tools we use are these two. There's the rectangular array mode and the triangular array mode. I prefer the triangular array mode because it nicely staggers the plants. So you draw with your polygon any sort of shape you want, something like that even. And it automatically calculates the number of the plants and produces really nice plant graphics like this. If you have a situation where you've got lots of different plants, I generally try and make sure that the plant tag goes to a plant that isn't overlapped by another plant so that you can easily see where it is. And I prefer that the plant tags always snap to um, a actual centre of a plant. And that's your very simple introduction to how to set up plant symbols. There is actually a next stage which is setting up all the colour fill classes for our concert plans. And we generally do that at the same time as we set up the original symbol. Thank you.